Hey guys, today I've got a really cool video for you, one that I'm anxious to get to the end to because I'm going to be, be doing a comparison. What I have are some brand new LED light bulbs. They're going in and they are replacing the factory halogen bulbs. A little bit before I begin about headlights, I've mentioned a little bit about this in previous videos. Stock bikes for the most part come with standard old halogen light bulbs. They're okay for brightness, usually a pretty good spread little bit of a yellow tint, nothing great. They do last a long time though and they're very cheap. Hence, they come in just about every bike out there. You can get slightly upgraded halogen bulbs such as the PIAAs or Silver Stars and they do offer a little bit of a bump in brightness. They are a whiter light for the most part and sometimes have a little bit different spread. But they're only going to give you about 20% more brightness over really good standard bulbs. Up until very recently, the only way you could get truly dramatic differences is by installing an HID kit. Now, yes, the light out of HID headlights is awesome. I've used them. I've had them in factory cars. Uh, in fact, uh, my car before this, a Mini Cooper, had them. Great lights. I mean, when they're new and they work, they are absolutely stunningly bright, beautiful, clear. They have big drawbacks though. Number one, they don't like to be switched on and off quickly at all. They have a little bit of a warm-up cycle. So oftentimes when you get a kit like that, there's no high beam installed. You only have the HIDs for your lows and they might give you some tiny useless little bulb as a high beam just for legal reasons, but for the most part, you don't have a high beam. Or if a bike has a dual bulb system for high and low, it's only the low that gets converted. Sometimes you'll find a high also, but those are very rare because you can't use them for flash to pass or anything like that. They have to be on and they like to be left on. They're kind of like little arc lights. So they're not like a glowing filament that can react quickly to changes. And they can burn out pretty quickly in comparison to other devices. The problem with that is they are super expensive to replace. The ballasts also go out. HID bulbs are not a plug and play replacement. It's a whole system. You get the the filament they call it itself, then you have the ballast which is kind of like the power pack for it. You have to install that separately somewhere in the bike. Those don't last forever. They can be thousands of dollars on cars, they can be hundreds of dollars on add-on kits to bikes, even if you have the kind that installed your forks like auxiliary driving lights. Up until recently those were really cool to do too. But here's, here's what's really even cooler. LED lights are the way of the future. Technology has been very rapidly progressing. LEDs are now just as bright, sometimes brighter than HIDs, and now they're plug and play. Oftentimes the LEDs up until very recently, like I said, have been that separate system too, or they've had big cooling fans attached to them. Now we finally have truly plug and play, one stop bulb replacements. These are gonna go in, plug right into the housing via a little adapter here, sits in the same configuration. There's nothing we have to do to the bike. They're perfectly legal. That's another drawback to HIDs. Oftentimes in your state it may be illegal to install an HID kit into a vehicle that wasn't designed for them. For example, on my Mini Cooper, the HIDs required self-leveling headlights because they can be absolutely blinding to oncoming traffic. And if you stick one in a housing that was designed for a halogen bulb, the reflections aren't designed for the HIDs. Man, that light goes everywhere. So you have to watch out for that. Sometimes you get pulled over and if you get a ticket for that, you gotta rip your system out. You just wasted all that money. LEDs, perfectly good to go. LEDs, you may not think of them as being extremely bright lights, but they really are and they have been for many years. They're used in traffic lights, they're used for emergency vehicle flasher lights. I mean, think about how far away you see these things going down the road. You can see a cop car a couple miles down the road blinking his reds and blues. You can see a traffic light for miles down the road if it's red or green at night. I mean, these put out light. And they're used for parking lot lights too. I mean, they have spread. These things are beautiful. So what I'm gonna do is do an install and then at the end, I'm gonna have a true side-by-side -side AB comparison. I'm gonna do one bulb at a time. And unlike virtually every other test out there I've seen of bulb upgrades, this is gonna be a very useful test. I'm not doing this in a garage shining the light at a wall. I'm not using my camera on auto so you can't even see the difference. I mean, I don't know why most of these people do these kinds of comparisons. It's absolutely useless. I'm going to park my bike in the middle of the street, shine it down the end of the road, 
and I'm going to use the correct camera settings so you can see the difference absolutely clear as a bell. And hopefully it's a day and night comparison. I'll be able to show you exactly what the spread difference is, the brightness difference. You'll be able to perceive it very clearly. Then I'm going to finish it up, put both bulbs in, do the same thing, and just so you can see a total, hopefully a total transformation. Like I said, I'm really excited to see the end result here. These are not too expensive. Obviously a little bit more than the best halogens out there, but certainly way less than HID kits. 45 bucks a piece. I happen to get mine from an online source called ADV Monster. You can Google them. And these are H4 size. They have a variety of plug and play sizes, so virtually any bike is covered. They have uh, pretty good detailed notes about what bikes are just plug and play, what require maybe drilling a little hole for a wire or something like that. And then uh, you can ask them if you're not sure, if you don't see your bike listed, say, hey, does that ball plug in? Does it work with my model? Most of the time you're going to find yes, because H4 is a very common bulb. There's really nothing special to it. A little bayonet connection, and you plug in a wire. You know, it's not rocket science. The pain in the butt part is getting to them on some bikes, this one included. Now, I'm specifically showing my 2014. This video, as far as the how-to, is really going to only apply to the 2013 and up FJR 1300s. Your bike is going to be very different if it's a different model. They're all very different as far as that goes. Some are accessed from the front. Some have very easy access from the back. Some like this require a lot of panel removal and whatnot. So consult your service manual. If you don't have one and you have a bike, a watercraft, an ATV, best hundred bucks you're ever going to spend. Absolutely guaranteed. It's going to pay for itself the first time you start to do something yourself instead of taking it to the dealer. So consult your manual. Your owner's manual may also have easy instructions for free. You may not have to buy that to figure out how to get your light bulbs. Now, some bikes, like the Yamaha, eh, they just say go to a dealer. It's kind of dumb, so you have to buy the service manual to even get those uh, specifications. Now this is the first time I'm doing it on here, so I'm going to do kind of a dry run to figure out what I need to do. Even the service manual isn't too specific on how to get to this. And the 13 is different because the first procedure is starting to take off this cowling. On the 14, it's pretty easy to get to the battery and get that right side off. 13, not so much. You have to take off the entire dash panel. So 13 owners, consult your manual to get through this first step, but after that, it's cake. Should be just removing the bulbs, fitting this in, and uh, placing a little wire adapter, and then we'll be good to go. All right, let's get started. First step is taking off our battery access panel. We've got two quick push connects on the inside here, and then two Phillips screws just like in our battery access video. If you install the pigtail, just move that out of the way. These just wiggle out with your fingernail. And then we're going to take out our Phillips screws. Now with all the fasteners out, we just have to take off the panel. It separates from the side panel here by bending out a little bit. And then you want to push the black part back towards the back of the bike and it'll come off a little catch. There we go. Now you want to pivot this up at the back and slide it out to remove it set this aside. Just like on the right side, we can go ahead and take off the fasteners for this left panel. We've got the Phillips screw here, Phillips screw here, and the two push connectors. Next up we're going to take off the dash panel. This is going to give us the majority of the access. Pretty straightforward. We're going to start by taking off the headlight adjustment knobs and they're held on just with one little tiny Phillips screw. Just loosen it a bit. Until the knob comes off. 
Don't lose the screw. Now with both headlight adjustment knobs off, we've got two Phillips screws, one on either side, right in here. Go ahead and take those out. Okay, this next part kind of sucks. It feels like you're going to break the bike. We need to separate the two sides here from the top. And these have some clips around them. I've undone this side to show you. There are slots running along this piece. It's one down here, one in the middle, and then two at the top. And underneath, I really can't show you much, but right there, I'm going to try to focus better. A little tiny thing. It's like an L-shaped hook, and it's pointing backwards. So you have to push this in just a little bit, and then separate the two. So I'll show you on this side. And yes, if you haven't guessed it, here's where I criticize Yamaha for making changing freaking headlight bulbs this incredibly difficult. So what we have to do is pry this big black part down from the panel here and the top center. You just push it in forward a little bit and then pry down. First thing to do is turn the key on, pop the glove box. We've got one Phillips screw right down here that's holding the two parts of this panel together. Then we'll be able to take off the inner one. Just wiggle it loose here. Take it out. Now we can really see the headlight assembly. We're almost there. Now with that inner panel out of the way, we finally have enough room to get to our headlights. So now let's go ahead and start the swap. The first step is to take out the headlights. I'm going to do one at a time so I can get you a really cool demo here at the end of the video. Okay, this next, next step is kind of hard for me to show because the stuff is so deep down in there. These wires right there, the green and yellow, are going to the headlight connector. It's a three-prong connect connector, and it just pulls straight back. Now, it's pretty flimsy plastic, so when you do grab it, grab it from the sides. It's kind of like a three-position. There's nothing on the bottom, and you've got plastic on the top, right, and left. I found it easiest to turn the bars away from the side you're working on, and get in here face backwards on the bike and get in here with your hand kind of like this. I can't do it. My hands are too big to use my right hand to get in here. Just from the way my thumb is, is trying to get in there. I can't grip it. But I can grip it pretty well upside down. So you just get in here. And again, I, I can't even see. I'm going by feel. But I can't even see what I'm working on. Just kind of wiggle it and it pops off. All right, there's no snap or anything like that. So here you can see it better. It's just a little three prong connector. Okay, so just swing that out of the way. Now I'll get the camera in there and show you the details of the bulb. You see the big rubber thing, big circle? All right, we're gonna pull that straight off. There's, you can see tabs. There's one on the bottom there you just hold on to and you pluck it off. kind of work your way around it and it slides off. Again, extremely hard for me to do, let alone show. Success! I had used two hands because there are so many wiring bundles there in the way I had to bend them just to wiggle this out of there. But it's not on with any clips or anything. It's just a soft rubber. You can't hurt it. The only thing to make sure of is that these arrows Go on the top and bottom. That's the only thing to watch out for when putting it back on. So now, way down in here, let me turn the light on for you. So way in there you can see the headlight, it's a silver assembly, and you can see a clip. You can see the right ear of it. Again, sorry, I can't really 
snake the camera in there to show you, but there's a wire clip and that clip gets undone and that is what's actually holding the light bulb in place. So now we're going to take out that clip. Okay, now you can see the clip is out of the way. All you have to do is push on that right tab. It bends a little bit and then springs open. It pivots on the left, so it's kind of like a door. So it's on the left side kind of pointing at us. And now the headlight, the lamp itself, can be removed. Before you go any further, stop and put on gloves. If you have any intentions of using these bulbs again, you cannot touch them. The glass must be 100% clean, including any contact with oil from your hands. Here we can see one of the bulbs. It just slides right out. It's not in with any kind of fittings or fasteners. Once you take that clip off, it's just free to pull right back out. Avoid touching the glass, like I said. Now, I may put these back in. You never know. Certainly good to have spares since they're good. So store them inside a clean new baggie and they will be good. I'm gonna put the camera down because I can't manipulate that with one hand. But I'm gonna store each one in a clean baggie, just set them on the shelf and they'll be good to go. I wanna show you the difference in technology here. Here's the stock halogen bulb. Nothing special about it. It's a 55 watt low and a 60 watt high circuit. In comparison, these new LEDs only draw 20 watts, so a third of the power, and they are rated for a 70 watt equivalent output. So they're brighter, significantly on the low end side especially, than the stock, and a lot less power hungry. So that saves a little bit of wear and tear on your alternator at least, and that's important for people that run a lot of electronics on their bike especially, but it keeps things nice and cool. And because it's so efficient, these do not require any kind of active cooling. It has these fins here just like a heat sink on a computer and that passively cools them enough. We have two sets of LEDs and they go into this reflector assembly. This replaces the bulb itself. This has the three prong attachments and this is what slides into the bike. So this is just going to be basically a receptacle that's going to live in the bike and it has an integrated bayonet mount. So the new light bulbs will be sliding into this adapter and then they just click into place. Now because they have a different interface between the ends of the wires and to save room because we have this much extra now sticking out of the back whereas it was flush before with the stock light. So the stock light had that big three prong connector hanging on the outside of that rubber plug right here. Well this is now going to go into that and this end will go at a 90 degree angle into the new lights. So we're just going to zip tie this up nice and neat up there with the wiring bundles. Basically just coil it up out of the way. And that's all we're going to need to do. So now the fun part, putting this guy in the bike. Now we're ready to put in our receptacle. A little tip on this, make sure you wipe off any schmutz from the front of it here. Because if you happen to put a big old fingerprint on something, it'll show. And you'd have to take the whole thing apart again to clean it. So it goes in with the two prongs. This can only go in one way. These are not evenly spaced around. It goes with the two prongs near the bottom and the one facing straight up. So the reflector is bouncing light up. This is how it looks. So the light bulb is going to be shining up for the most part. This just slides in and then that clip down in there just swings over like a door and keeps this in place. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Again, it's not something I can really show because my hand is going to completely cover it. You have to kind of do it by feel. And there we go. One in place. You can see the orientation there. The open part is facing the top. I'll tell you what, that was incredibly difficult for me because I have such large hands. Trying to fit that in there and manipulate the clip to make sure it wasn't interfering all without seeing it and barely being able to move my fingers. If you have smaller hands, this is going to be a lot easier for you. And what I found was kind of leaning myself over and looking through the headlight here to make sure it was going into the right place. And then I could see that I had the clip in front of it and I had to get around that and make sure it was oriented right so the little ears there went in the right tabs. But it's finally in there. So now that that's clipped in place and it's just sitting down in there, now we can put in the bulb itself. Okay, the first thing we have to do before installing these lights into the adapters, I've got the other one here to show you. So this is already in the bike. We have our pigtail here. 
this is incredibly difficult to get in. There's this triangle shaped tab goes into the socket. The socket is broken plastic. It's pretty thick, but you have to bend these out of the way as you're pushing this in. It is just extremely difficult. It just does not want to go in. So I'm just going to bend these tabs real gently here as I'm pushing down just to work them over the lip of that triangle. Be careful of the wires. Of course, be careful of the fins. So you want to get it all the way in there. Doesn't click or anything, but whew, that is that is in there. Okay, so that takes a lot of force. And these just kind of stay bent out a little bit. So now we can go ahead and install this into the bike. So now we're ready to put the assembly into the holder. It can only go in one way. It is a bayonet mount, but the two sides are different. You have a smaller indent here and a bigger one, actually the opposite. You got the bigger one on the top, smaller one on the bottom. I'm calling the top where this wiring loom is gonna come out. It's gonna go in with this facing the top. It's gonna go in at a slight angle and then just a little twist to lock into place. And there you go. You can see the bulb in the housing and the LEDs are facing just about exactly left or right. It's a little bit of a cock uh, up on the outside here. So now we can connect the pigtail to our factory harness. And now we can go ahead and do a function check. Okay, that looks good. Now this shot here is a clear demonstration of the color difference. Now the headlight matches the dang running lights, which were LED to begin with. So you got these cool LED strips, nice and white, nice and white. No more dingy yellow sticking out like a sore thumb. And this is what it looks like to the naked eye. What I'm seeing on the camera right now is exactly the same color difference that I'm seeing. So this is completely stock, obviously, that's the new one. Now I'm in the garage. I can see that it's brighter with my naked eye, but this is not the test I'm going to do. I'm gonna wait a couple hours. It's still daylight out, but I'm gonna do a real good test for you guys. I'm gonna keep it like it is. I'm gonna go into the street. I'm gonna cover one by one. I'll do some pictures and I'll do a video and we'll see exactly how it looks as I shine the lights down my street, just like if you were riding the bike. All right, well, come on sunset. Very interesting results there. I'll tell you this is why I don't believe marketing hype, although I have to admit I bought it in this case. And this is why, more importantly, I test things myself. As you could plainly see from that test, new LED on the left, stock on the right, going back and forth there. Not an improvement. I like the color better. I, I do like the color better, and I do like the way it looks on the bike better, but that is not worth 90 bucks. Uh, to me, that's maybe worth nine bucks. If they made the stock halogen bulbs in that color, I'd get those in a heartbeat, but nope, these are going back. Absolutely. You can see very plain as day. They're not any brighter. Not a bit. You cannot see any more of the road. Those camera settings were on manual. It was one continuous take. I was just putting a towel over one lamp and then the other. No more bright at all. The beam spread, surprisingly, a lot less, a lot more spotty with the LEDs. Obviously with the halogens you have a completely open bulb and more importantly even light distributing from that bulb hitting every part of the reflector and the reflector is giving you all that beam spread. And of course the LEDs they're just four tiny little pinpoint spots and they're going straight out to the sides and you're kind of living with what you get. Well I'm not happy with what I get so no. 
these are going back. I'm not even going to install the other one. It's not even worth continuing going and testing. I do have one more thing to show you though. So this will at least be a very valuable video on how to change your headlamps. And it's also become why not to waste your money on LEDs, at least not as of September 2014. I'm sure things will improve in the future. It is, like I said, evolving very quickly. This is still day and night, pun intended, from even a year ago with LED lamp technology. So next year, hey, if something else comes on the market, I'm game, I'll give it a shot. 90 bucks was cheap enough to roll the dice. I'm gonna return these though. Definitely not worth keeping for 90 bucks. I, I mean, I don't like the pattern in that at all. I love the stock. Uh, I just wanted more light and a whiter light, and I didn't get more light, so that was the most important part. All right, let me show you the rest on how to change your light bulbs, and I'll at least make this a valuable video for you guys. Okay, down here on the right-hand side, you can see these two wiring connectors right here. All right, they're held on by a bracket, and they need to be removed so you've got clearance to pull off your components from the headlamp, which are right in front, which is right in front of it. That's the only difference. So get those out of the way, and then it's the exact same procedure as we did on the left. Assembly is the same thing in reverse. You know, put your headlights back in, put your dash panel back on, put your two sides back on, and you're good to go. Nothing really special there. The only trick is, as I detailed in my pigtail video, when you're putting these side panels on, just slide and catch the little tab right in there. That's the only trick. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope this helps somebody. Hopes it, uh, hope it saves some money on buying LEDs. And uh, like I said, at least I got a how to change your headlight video out of it. I'll miss you. Nice white color. But I like you a lot better, usable light. See ya.